Hello, my name's Brian and welcome to Overland Calling. Today, it's Starlink Mini Christmas. So I've been testing out all kinds of different ways to power this bad boy. It is as small as they said. Oh man, I love it. Trying it wall outlet. I got a USB-C. Got my Yeti. And I got my, what is it, 30,000 milliamp hour backup battery, the emergency power. So we're going to see how this thing does on all these different hookup methods. And one bonus one, which is wired into my main aux battery on my Gladiator. That's one I really need to work because that's probably what I'm going to be using to be able to go on the road and work a 9 to 5. So let's get it done. I'm going to start off with just a little quick bit. If you haven't seen any videos, maybe you, your internet's been out for the past week. This is a Starlink Mini. Let's get some quick size. All right. It is about 11 and 3 quarter inches by 10 and a quarter inches. I don't have a MacBook to compare it to, but I got an iPad. It's bigger than an iPad, but not by a whole lot. You can easily toss this thing in a backpack. All right, so Starlink Mini. It's able to be powered from 12 volts to 48 volts. And we're gonna hit a big range of that today. comes with this wall outlet, which is nice and all, but I don't want to use 110. I don't think. I'm going to guess it takes more electricity, but we'll see. Cords, a 2.1 millimeter inside and 5.5 outside barrel connector. Fits right into this adapter here. It has this really cool system here to keep the water out fits right in there super snug does the same thing on the Starlink itself now this cord is 50 feet long seems kind of like overkill but hey you know what I might need it I'm gonna take it with me of course I'm overlanding slash you know camping out of my car so I'm not carrying it on my back. So we're going to look at powering it via AC hooked up to my power station here. We've also got this cord here. You're going to have to take my word. I'm not doing a close up on this. Yep, 72 inches. All right, so we got a six foot cord here. There's my barrel connector. Again, 2.1 millimeters on the inside and 5.5 on the outside. The other end's just a plain old USB C. This cord says that it's rated for PD for 100 watts. I bought it on Amazon, so I can't promise it, but we're going to find out if it'll power this sucker or not. I already mentioned the voltage on the Starlink, which is 12 to 48. But how many amps does it need? Or how many watts? So I'm going to check it against the power station. My emergency power brick. It's a pretty cool power supply. This thing's pulled me out of a bind more than once, keeping my laptop going on long conference calls. Then I'm going to be powering everything on my three-year-old Yeti 500. Sorry, I don't have any newer models. I have to buy all this stuff myself. So, all right, before we get into it, just so you know, there's one bonus method coming up at the end, which is how I actually end up planning on using it for my primary power, which is hooked into my aux battery. But we're going to save that to the end. 
but let's get going with this power testing. And here we got my 65 watt, 30,000 milliamp hour backup battery. This is what I use for my backup power on my laptops. And this sucker is working just fine. I'm online, run a quick speed test. Not bad. Got the regular stock cable 50 footer plugged in. Gonna go back in to the regular power adapter. Just the inverter on is drawing seven watts. All right, that's not too bad. Let's see what happens when you plug something into it. Got the mini on startup. Drawing 42 watts. 44. Wow, bumping up there. Man, 54 watts. All right, and now it's starting to kind of, kind of come down a little. So that that's good because I was getting a little scared there. All right, we're gonna let this run for about 10 minutes and then come back to it. It's been about 10 minutes and the draw is right at about 30 watts. But there's something I want you to see. So we'll say idle is 30 watts. But when I get on my Starlink app and I run a speed test, start making it do some work, take a peek at that wattage. Now we're creeping up. So depending on how much you're using it is going to depend on how much it draws. Looks like about 30 watts for its idle use. Pumping up to 40, 50 if it's pumping a lot of data. Now I'm going to plug in my barrel plug to USB-C connector. So we've got the barrel in there. Now we're going to plug into my 60 watt PD. Let's see what that does. Turn on the bank. Bam. All right, here we go. Creeping up a little bit. Not crazy. All right, we're going to let it get through its startup. And then in about 10 minutes, we'll check and see what kind of power usage it's got going on and test it on a speed test. All right, we are back about 10 minutes later. Let's see what this sucker's pulling. Man, it is just all over the place. Getting a lot more bounce with this method. but it's averaging out showing that it'll be able to power the sucker for 17 hours. That's pretty good on a 50 amp hour battery. All right, now the moment of truth. Zoom out here. No. All right, here we go. So we're gonna make sure we're connected this time. Bam. Connected and speed test. It's 
still getting a large amount of bounce. So just keep that in mind. The more you're using it, the quicker it'll draw. But I don't know, I definitely say it's lower. It's bouncing around too much, honestly, for me to be able to tell a whole lot on the it does seem to be drawn a fair amount less than my inverter though. All right, that's going to be a wrap for the power draw section on this. And we're going to go into how I actually wired it into my main auxiliary battery on my Jeep. Uh, luckily, I filmed that during the day, so you're not going to have to deal with, you know, it getting dark outside. I should have done an install video. I feel awful about it, but you know what? It was like 98 degrees and 60% humidity here, and I was dying. I just needed to get it done in because I'm getting ready to hit the road. And this testing, while I'm making this video for you, this testing's all for me, because I want to know what I got when I get out there. Got the 50 foot cable here. So plug this bad boy right in here. This is just the standard one that comes with Starlink. So, nothing shocking there. Where the real magic is happening, if we follow the other end of this cord up, we got this bad boy here, we got the other end, and you can't see where I'm gonna plug it in because I've got it sheltered from the rain. But right underneath that switch is another barrel connection. So, I've got my 12 volt system in here. Currently, you can hear my fridge running. <laughs> There's my lithium battery. And in through there is where my wire's coming out. It runs right out here into the switch. I turn the switch on. Bam. Power. That's going to this guy right here. Let's see, let's see it without my... So this is a 12 to 36 volt boost converter. Ordered it off Amazon. A little worried about this, but man, it is working like a charm. So the black and the red is power in. The black and yellow is power out. It's very clearly labeled on the back of it. That power out is going right back in my battery box to then hook into my barrel connection so I can keep things a little watertight. While that's running, these are what I've got for the barrel connection into this thing. Comes with a pack of five. Standard 5.5 by 2.1. I'm running 36 volt, so even though it's got the small wires on it, I'm not having any issues. Thank you for joining me. I hope this helps you out and I hope it makes you a little more confident in if you want to get the system and what you need to power it. Because I know that's one of the big question marks that I had when I got this system. So anyway, I hope it helps. And if nothing else this video shows you, you've got options. And honestly, even at the top draw for the inverter, it's still way less than I expected. So I'll take it. It's a win. I think overall, my favorite's going to be that 12 volt to 36 volt permanent power system I got in my Jeep, just because it's nice, easy, flip the switch and bam, it's there. Plus, I got 260 amp hours of power. So that'll last me for a hot second. Hey, when I go out, I'm out there for, you know, months at a time and i could be camping for five days straight how much power draw is very important to me because i'm not moving around getting that mega charge into my auxiliary battery i hope this helped you out stay tuned i'm going to be going out for a two month long trip so i'll have a couple more check-ins to just kind of let y'all know how things are working out in the long run out in the wild out in reality so if you're car camping or overlanding and power is a major concern for you, 
hey, I hope this helps. Till next time, enjoy the ride.